Hello, um, I'm Jeff Jurgens. I'm academic co-director for the Consortium for the Liberal Arts in Prison. Uh, I am also fellow for anthropology and social theory at the Bard Prison Initiative. And in addition to that, I'm an associate fellow um, at the Arendt Center. So when did you first start reading Arendt? Well, it was about five years ago. Um, I'm an anthropologist by training, and Arendt isn't really part of the anthropological canon, um, so um, that means I'm a bit of a latecomer. But um, I came across colleagues who were citing um, Arendt's arguments on the decline of the nation-state and the end of the rights of man um, from the, or the origins of totalitarianism. And um, I um, found that Arendt's argument about um, stateless people um, and about uh, how they had lost a s supposedly inalienable human rights to be a really interesting way to think about the legal predicaments and the kind of just existential plight of refugees and applicants for political asylum and many undocumented migrants today. Um, and I was really intrigued by the idea that modern subjects' humanness ultimately was predi predicated on their um, recognized membership within a, a sovereign nation state. And so as I started reading Arendt, um, I quickly realized that a lot of what she had to say was very relevant to my own interests, which have to do with um, pluralism and uh, citizenship uh, in Germany and Turkey. What's your favorite book by Arendt? Well, let's see. I would have to say Eichmann in Jerusalem. Um, through her account of Eichmann's career as a Nazi officer, um, as well as his trial, um, Arendt raised really crucial questions, it seems to me, about the nature of conscience, about the intellectually and politically disabling aspects of modern life, and also about the challenge of passing judgment on the unprecedented. Um, I have to say I really admire the book's commitment to facing up to complexity and to ambiguity wherever they may lie. Um, and um, that commitment to facing up to complexity certainly applied to Eichmann himself, who was subject to a great deal of critical scrutiny in the book, but it didn't spare European Jewish leaders, the Jerusalem court, or the Israeli government either. And of course, there are many detractors of uh, Arendt's book um, who take fault with the way that she holds Jewish and Israeli leaders to account, as if that somehow diverted or negated the enormity of Eichmann's and the Nazis' crimes. Um, but it seems to me that rigorous thinking is supposed to unsettle our unquestioned convictions to give us pause um, over in relation to kind of previously sort of pat distinctions and judgments. And I think on that front, Eichmann in Jerusalem is a tremendous success, even if I don't agree with every single claim that Arendt makes in the book. So ultimately, why does Arendt matter? Well, let's see. I would say that Arendt matters because she was a courageous thinker who invited and expected her readers to be courageous too. Um, she offered dark, uncompromising assessments of the predicaments that we all face, but um, she never allowed those assessments to lapse into wholesale pessimism and resignation and paralysis. Um, I mean, she was always committed to the idea that new forms of life, new forms of political action were always possible if we had the insight and determination and determination to bring them into being. Um, and she held on, well, she held on to the, the human capacity for uniqueness, for novelty, in a way that it seems to me recognized the hold that history has on all of us, but um, refuses to concede that we are shackled by our history, that we're re reduced to it. Um, and in that for that reason, I mean, I think that actually she's quite a, a hopeful writer as well. Um, and that's, I think, really the core of her importance for me.